Welcome. Today we're at 1315 Duke Street. This is a very historical landmark and I'm very excited to have Nkuzi Nantambu here. He has a master's in black studies and he's going to tell us a little bit about the history of this building. Thank you, Katie. Okay, we're here at one of the most iconic buildings in American history. This is the Franklin and Armfield Slave Trading Farm. And you'll see the image in many books because it has dealers and slaves in it. Dealers and slaves was prominently featured on the building and this particular firm and its owners are written about in several books. They were in operation from 1828 until the mid-1830s. They were responsible for transporting Africans from this area to the southern United States Annually, they transported approximately a thousand people. And so Franklin and Armfeld were the two gentlemen that owned this this facility. And so we look at it as really sweet irony that now it's the center place for where progression for the black community takes place, as opposed to where it was an oppressive environment so many hundreds of years ago. And so um, when they were designed, when they purchased this building. Uh, five years ago, actually, this is the fifth anniversary, and we just had a major symposium on Wednesday. Um, they wanted something that would not feel dark and depressed, and this basement is where they held the slaves in the jail originally. So one of the, the key points, I was trying to think of what would make this most relevant for you as travel agents. What makes this building special is that it's where the history actually happened, as opposed to most museums where it replicates or it tells the history but this is where it actually took place. And so there is a, a rendering back here where you could see, the, it used to be the entire block was the compound. So they had a hospital, they had facilities, they had the jail, yes. But one of the things with Franklin and Armfo was to make sure that their slaves were well treated because they wanted them to be shown well. And one distinction is that this was not part of the slave trade when they brought slaves from Africa to the United States. This was post-abolition and, and blacks were free and they were running out of tobacco. So they decided we'll work with cotton but the demand was in the south so they had to take free blacks and get them down to the south. And so this was a place of commerce. So if you look at some of those, um, those flip charts over here, the cost of a slave excuse me, was even higher than the cost of selling a car back in those days. And so a buggy would have sold for $75 to $150, which is $1,900 to $2,500 five years ago. A slave sold for $1,000 to $1,200, which was equivalent $25,000 to $30,000. And what we want people to take away, take away when they leave here is that even though it was an oppressed situation, we're all here today because these people survived. And I think that's one of the most important things. And that... The Urban League has been able to turn this into a legacy for children to see where they came from, but that they can be more than that heritage of slavery. The history of your family, you said your great-grandfather? Yes, my great-grandfather was actually a child when slavery ended. Um, he was much older than my great-grandmother. She was his third wife, and so most people my age can't say that their great-grandfather was a slave, but my great-grandfather was a slave. He never knew his father. His um, father was sold to another slave master when his mother was pregnant with him. She begged them not to sell and keep her family together, but they wouldn't. So my grandmother and her siblings and their offsprings are the only Griffins in our family. His half-siblings have another name, so we have to use a hyphenated name for our family reunion. We use the Griffin Andrew because she never saw Griffin again. So we have Griffin family out there that we don't know, that you know. That we can't trace. We're very fortunate today that this building houses the National Urban League. The National Urban League, a nonprofit, is responsible for sponsoring African Americans and other non-traditional students into the middle class and into colleges. In fact, I was a recipient of one of their scholarships for $7,000 when I was an undergraduate. 